Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Zach. Hola, yo soy Zach. Um, I'm learning Spanish, so yeah, that's why I talk in Spanish. O vamos a animar? Yeah, I had to Google that last part, but today we're going to animate. And we're going to use Blender 2.93.2 um, to do some rotoscoping. I don't know how to say all of that in Spanish. I only know greetings. So let's get started. Vamonos! Yeah, I'm super excited to show you guys how to do rotoscoping. So rotoscoping is a great technique, uh, especially if you're a beginner, because it helps you get form and other things. Um, I mean, not form, but like smooth animations if you don't know how to do them. So this part right here is super important on how to import the movie. Basically, you're going to get the camera, select the camera, select the camera green icon, and then go down and make sure that it's checked for background images. Switch it to front on the depth, and then the background, uh, I believe it's like type or something. Uh, switch it from image to movie clip, and then you know you adjust the offset X and the Y. Uh, you play with the scale so that it fits in frame, and then I basically just moved. Um, where I was at in the timeline to where I he was starting to smoke the cigarette or wherever you like um, the animation to start and then that's when we get into um, the animating the an the rotoscoping part so basically what we want to do is lower the opacity on that um, background image and we're just going to kind of draw the shapes and um, the overall like I guess structure of uh, the animation because uh, you can actually get away with just like a stick man and, and making it super simplified but I like to do the technique that a lot of anime and a lot of animation um, just mainly anime they do where they they just animate one part um, whether it's their mouth or their hand and the rest is panning or, or moving um, just to kind of keep the person or to give the illusion that it is animating so you know you save a lot of time um, with animation because you only have to animate one part so I'm only gonna animate his hand smoking because that's really the only part moving so the background and all the other stuff I don't have to animate so I can spend a lot more time and, uh, and add a lot more detail than I would if I uh, was to animate and this is really important because especially with this frame by frame rotoscoping um, or any kind of animation where you're not puppeteering everything it, it, it is very expensive it costs it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of patience to draw each frame and I'm on doing drawing on two so every second frame I'm drawing but there's people who draw on once which is every frame they draw to make it really really smooth um, so like I said it's extremely important um, to just kind of work smarter and not work harder uh, you're gonna work hard obviously but you know why why do that you know like why work super hard when you could just work smarter and not especially you don't want to get burnt out because I've gotten burnt out too many times before so like I said I can if you see I, I can add all this, these little details like the antenna this little power on like the, the let you know like all of these thing like a pack of smokes like all of the all of these details I can add and it's awesome because uh, I wouldn't do that if I was just animating uh, on the other side, right? So on his um, on his hand, I'm not going to add that many details because I'm moving it. Um, because each frame, that means I have to update and draw those details. And I'm not confident enough that I'm going to hit the details every time I draw the frame. So, that being said, um, we're going to kind of go uh, now every two frames I'm just going to duplicate so I'm going to push shift D on the timeline with the keyframes and we're just going to draw the animated part so we're just going to erase his hand and uh, his arm but keep everything the same this is why I always like duplicate the um, the frame so I can just constantly just focus on what is animating and not waste time uh, redrawing the whole uh, uh, scene like frame by frame. I also turn off onion, uh, onion skinning and stuff because I'm since we're rotoscoping I'm using his hand as a basis for like the previous frame so I'm just going off like how his hand is and how the positioning is and stuff and that's why I'm kind of keeping it somewhat three-dimensional so whenever we add shading and stuff later it makes a little bit more sense now this is obviously extremely rough so don't think that like oh yeah I'm taking you know I do this like really serious um, 
<laughs> ideally you want to have clean lines but if you know me and you know this channel my sketches are garbage so I openly admit that and it's okay um, I think as long as you know your faults everything's okay but overall yeah my sketches are horrible so but but as long as they're readable um, that's the main thing just make sure they're readable so w when someone sees it they can get it and this actually is kind of a style too so you can get away with um, just kind of sketchy well you know it's just a sketchy style um, and on a side note uh, when I have clients uh, I was gonna say clients in Spanish but I don't know that yet I only know greetings so when I have clients um, they when I used to do like a lot of portraits and stuff, they actually prefer that sketchy look, even though it's considered like amateur because you know it doesn't show good line control whenever you're like doing your line work and stuff. It's like you're unsure about like if you're gonna have a line or which way it's gonna go. Um, but they actually prefer that. So, anyways, yeah. So um, I'm going every frame, and you can use up on the arrows, the arrow keys, to jump between keyframes to kind of correct um, the errors and stuff. Uh, you know so I'm just kind of like flipping back and forth same thing that you would do on a light table if it was like old-school 2d animation you just kind of flip up and then like ch check it and then come back and then flip it up and then check it and then flip it up and that's what you're kind of doing it's a lot of fixing and then going back and then like looking at it this one not so much because rotoscoping is so like I mean literally you j you're just pretty much copying um, like what they're doing as far as like um, the direction and stuff it's uh, so a kind of go off that point um, with like you don't have to be this detailed um, with it uh, as far as like you know the structure stuff you just add a stick man and some some balls and joints just to know where he's going so now I'm in a in a separate stroke layer uh, we want to go ahead and create the background the outline so the background's not going to animate at all so you don't have to worry about anything just draw it once and then you're good but it's really important because I did add a noise modifier to the front character so it looks like he's moving um, so, uh, if you want to learn more about no noise modifiers and how to add them check out my last video I will link it like somewhere over here and um, yeah I, I kind of go in more detail about how to add noise modifiers to the doodle so and that basically just makes it look like it was all sketched um, so yeah, so now we're in the fills. Um, uh, after I had just, you you know, you want to create a new material, and you know, want to keep the palette like pretty, pretty, uh, pretty safe at first. You want to keep it really minimal colors, even though I add like I think a decent amount of colors compared to like just three or color. But I still play it safe though because the end, you see, it's very monochromatic right here. I don't know what I was thinking with these colors. Um, I guess I was thinking very like Ed Ed and Eddie, like 1980s. Um, kind of feel fresh prints maybe um, I was definitely trying to mix like a 70s uh, cyberpunk kind of thing I don't know what I was thinking with these colors but um, yeah so basically you want to just do that and then we're gonna kind of come back here and the cool thing about materials is you can change the color on the fly so you don't have to be committed um, and you see me like adjusting the colors and the color wheel so it kind of looks better um, and make sure that the fill is selected and yeah so the fill selected and so when you draw it's a, now if you had clean line work you could just use the fill tool the bucket the paint bucket tool and then just drop it in the lines but since it's so messy we have to go in there and manually like draw and stuff and as far as my pencil you want to stay on the the pencil i mean as far as my, duh, as far as my brush you, i use a pencil um it's just simple it's not like overly comp you know complicated and i'm sure there's more advanced like techniques and stuff but right now you know who cares you know you're just kind of learning so you know go like that and here i am just uh adding the shade uh sh sh shadows and stuff and uh how you want to add the shadows and it's nighttime here noches oh look there we go it's a uh, buenos noches uh, buenas noches i'm sorry so um how you want to add the shadows is i just sample um from around the surra surrounding colors and then I just darken it a little bit and then lean it more into the blue the, the dark so I lean towards the blue and then the lights into the yellow to kind of keep it somewhat dynamic and not to just wash out the colors with too dark or too light now huh, my gosh this is so much talking huh. so now we're animating the fills so make sure that you're in the right fill layer on the, uh, you're in the, you're in the right layer on the timeline remember 
that that is super important because if you try to draw the fill on the lines layer then the lines will get overlapped and you'll lose um, data right so you want to keep that you have the lines on a separate layer and, and, it's, and it's on that green um, it looks like a rope on the tool thing I don't know what the heck it's called but this is called the layers panel and make sure you add that and then just animate off of there and then really pay attention on the keyframes because you want to make sure as you can see that I'm lining up the keyframes to the of the fill with the line keyframes really pay attention to that because if you mess that up I mean you can fix it but like um, it's just you're wasting time right and this, this is a really timely matter but I'm just kind of go back every keyframe and and draw uh, the fill and stuff oh okay well wow, that is it so yeah I hope you guys like this video if you like it um, go ahead and like the video obviously and subscribe if you haven't already please join the discord I am desperate for some amigos and amigas um, yeah I would love to have some friends and I make more videos like this all the time every week you can check out my past videos of grease pencil and just let me know what you'd like to uh, see uh, Side note, if you would like a free animation or portrait or photo edit, I do all of those things. You can be featured in my next video. So please comment below if you would like that. Uh, you can reach out to my email right here. And I'm trying not to make this outro too long. So hey, have a great rest of your day. Um, if it's afternoon here, so buenas uh, tardes. I think ta tardes. Yeah, anyways, good afternoon. Uh, and yeah, have a great rest of your day. Adios.